The race for the world first has changed for the worse. I think the yeah. race to world first is a great event to follow, which oh, I've enjoyed go. exponentially more since the progress began to be widely streamed at the start of BFA. I don't yeah. blame any single person competing in the race for how things are. It is a competition. The idea is to try and win. It doesn't matter yeah. how you achieve that goal no. so long as you are not doing anything against the terms of service. The Why would that matter too? Why would that matter? <laughs> if you cheat and you win and nobody catches you, then you're a winner. It's that simple. Whilst I may be critical of how things are and how they've changed, it's a result of necessity from how much more time and effort organizations have been able to justify putting into WoW and the race to world first rather than the actions they have taken to get there. As for mm -hmm. Blizzard, well, it just feels as though they sort of want in on it, just but they yeah. kind of feel as though they don't. It's kind of hard to put your finger on where they are at with the race to world first. On one yeah. hand, you have them removing master loot and creating systems which are extremely altered unfriendly making top raiders do obscene bro like blizzard spent more time fucking uh fine tuning the tier list acquisition methods than they did probably designing the raid it, it was insane like how many times do you have to fucking rewrite this amounts of grinding to stay competitive on the other hand yeah. they're out there retweeting guild messages gifting subs yep. and streams and you can't tell me that blizzard hasn't overtuned end bosses to try and get them past the first reset then again no, they do that yeah that, that's that's what their focus is on it, it's not about creating good content for the casual player it, it's about creating a challenge for the top 100 people in the game and, and yes this is a zero sum because if those people were not working on that, they would be working on something else. Why balance the game around what is literally a handful of guilds for yes. the first week or two after a tier opens? It's ridiculous. That just doesn't make any sense to do. And so whilst Blizzard and many of us cheer from afar, the race to world first has it's remained- It's like you guys don't even fight the fights that they fight. Like you don't even do them because like if you go back and you watch a lot of the uh, first mechanics of the fights, like for example, like Lady Vosh, who would mind control the tank and crazy shit like that. And uh, in BC, that's the first one that I can think of. Most guilds never even get to experience it. Yeah, Asmon's take on Mythic Rating is so brain dead. Oh, really? So you think that it's good that Blizzard devotes hundreds or probably thousands of hours of development time into content that 1% of the player base plays, and then 1% of the 1% of the player base plays its fully designed mechanics? You think that's good? I would say it's not in the community's hands. It's a waste and oh boy, of resources. Has it changed? Today I want to take a look at the race, what goes into it, and how in yeah. some ways it's gone a little bit off course, in my opinion. Okay. Before we do though, I have a video coming out soon TM on the world first race all the way from vanilla to today. Oh, that'll it's be, be cool. one of the I want to watch videos that. I've ever done. That's and I'm badass. really happy with it so Parasocial far. So if you raiders, like this yeah. and that idea and don't want to miss out, make sure to drop a sub on the channel. That'd be great. But let's get into it. Time has always been a big part of MMO RPGs, and for those competing at the top level, this has always been a key factor. For many expansions, oh, yeah. the only real barrier to oh, entry yeah. for content on an alt was just the gearing, the tier set bonuses, and at times reputations. Then we added the legend. Okay, all right, we gotta just let's just get this out of the way. All right, people say, well, what about Lost Art? What about Lost Art? What about? But what about? But what about, but, but I don't understand this other thing, and I'm not smart. So, in my mind, two things that are different are the same. Oh my god, Asmin is so dumb. But what about... I agree with you with Lost Ark, and so do the devs. That's why they make it to where everybody can start in Tier 3 in Korea. And that's why other people are saying that they should increase the honing rate, so it's easier to get to Tier 3 as well, which I agree with. Please, stop with the gotchas. Please stop. Like you, if it like, and if you have a gotcha, please know what you're saying. You don't even know what you're saying. Three gem. It's not the... chat, by the way. It was like uh, I, we literally just got two guide. Okay, I, I saw that there were two guys, uh, saying it. So like, it was just two guys that said this. So like, it's not chat. You guys are fine. But like, it's just two two clowns. Woken Mr. Pandaria, the ring in Warlords of Draenor, and then Legion happened. Legion yeah. was the turning point with the time investment absolutely shot through the roof. It was now gearing your artifact weapon level, clearing the yep. entire map of True. daily content for artifact power and reputation, and of course, your legendary, True. which back at the start of Legion was totally random. Some were so powerful they were best in slot forever, and others were 
disappointing. Now, whilst the first raid tier in Legion, Emerald Nightmare Mythic, never merited this level of preparation and to this day remains one of the fastest cleared raids yeah. ever, it did not stop top players from investing time. As in if that was a bad thing. Like, as if, like, oh, Emerald Nightmare is too easy. It, it, like, it had, like, two levels of imbalance. It was fine. It was fucking fine. Creating multiple of the same class to try and fish for best in slot Legos, or to sit inside more of souls for days upon end to grind their artifact weapon. These were just- I did that, by the way. I would start up the stream, and it'd be 2 p.m., and I'd already be in Discord with Trictagon and Palash, and it was a Palash I was playing with back then, and, and, and Ryuk and all the boys, and I would be like, I would already be five runs deep of into Maw Souls, and I turn on the stream, and everybody in the stream would be like, Oh no! Oh no! Fuck, man! You're gonna have to make us watch this again for eight hours? I'm like, yep, guys, make sure to subscribe! Yep, go ahead! things that made sense to do. In Battle for Azeroth, they added the Heart of Azeroth, gearing, yeah. artifact armor, dailies, weeklies, essences, and finally, corruptions. Corruptions in particular really began to skew the line of how good is this item actually compared yeah. to its gear score. Guilds have began brandishing sometimes their literal real-life wallets for the big ticket items, and were using their social media platforms to signal boost this message. These two- As I said, guys, like it was- I have watched Billy May's infomercials that had less intrusive text on the screen than the world first race streams asking for people to trade them tier sets. Holy shit. Holy shit. And then again. Oh, well. If Asman asks for people to trade him gear, he's a piece of shit. But whenever these guilds do it, it's okay. What the fuck? Huh? I'm getting it again. They're paying? Well, I say they're I pay them an exposure. I say their name, there's a clip. That's pretty good. Things really started to become noticeable here. They had been going on for some time though. More on that later. Yeah, now to today on. in the Shadowlands, it's all about covenants. Regrinding to 80, getting the best gear. And for the first time, we have the not very good combination of no master loot and Gear sets. You could have grinded that character up to a point where they Ooh. are mythic ready day one and they just get bad RNG Ooh. and get a zero tier. True. That can absolutely make a difference in a mid max setting because True the and tier real. bonuses in the sepulchre are very powerful. So, what yeah. do you do? Regrind a second class to 80 renown for a chance at tier next time? It's not a side of the game the average player will ever see, or frankly, should ever see, because I can't imagine it's fun at all it's not about the fun though surely it's about winning and more importantly yeah blizzard just invented this bullshit because they're uh too lazy to pay customer service representatives to uh manage uh add-on disputes or sorry master loot disputes uh, I've, I've always been of the mind i've said this before is that blizzard does not care about uh the player base and bad experiences if they did they would ban people that harass women in their games for years but they don't do that either they just let them make new accounts and then blizzard blames the women for being harassed this has happened multiple times no they don't give a fuck about that they just they, they got rid of master looter so they could save money on customer service because this was something that was taking up ticket time they do it at the office. Yeah. <laughs> they say, hey, you're lucky it's not happening in real life, you know? Over here, it's even worse. There has become more financial incentives to keep these guys in front of the cameras and playing. Yeah. And looking back for much of the Race to World first history, it wasn't this huge sponsor-led event. There was no live coverage and guilds actively no. avoided sharing anything about encounters I remember as that. much as they could. It was two dozen guys who were either for the most part uni students who seemingly had infinite time or who had taken a week off work for the event. Races would be affected by your boss calling you in. Can you imagine that happening to somebody in limit or echo right now and some of the top guilds have well that's basically what it was really sorry, changed sorry, it was really bright i'll stop pausing there uh it's like yeah a lot of also people is that like willie forgets you also have the omega neats like i was an omega neat like i was one of the ones that would i would sit at home and i would take like one class at community college enough to where i could get like a a, a grant and get a little bit of money and then uh, I would do other things for money, but I never wanted to have a job. 
and I, I never did. Uh, I, even whenever I was a little kid, I never wanted to have a job. And I wanted to uh, uh, live off of the government. That was, that was my goal, is live off of the government and play video games all day with the boys. And I work now. What, what's unfortunate, right, is that, like, I've worked so... I, I've worked harder to not work than I would have had to work if I was just working. Like, now, I'm working fucking, like, I, I stream for fucking 6 to 12 hours a day. And then I also run a fucking company. And then I also have to do other shit on top of that, like the stuff with, like, the YouTube channel. So I'm spending 15 hours a day not working. Or, or trying to work to where I don't have to work. I, it's like, what happened? How did this happen? Into I can't organizations. Win. A limit were recently picked up by long standing esports. Work, not working, Liquid, a lot Echo of work, are yeah. largely ex method members. The Race to World First event for these guys must be like being Santa in a mall at Christmas or a flower shop around Valentine's Day. Suffice to say, win or lose, there are two to four weeks per year where all eyes are on them and they oh, yeah. must do well. And organizations fit into the downtime between this by securing sponsors and giving players a reason to be able to keep streaming, whether it's a random day logging in doing mythic plus keys for fun or the last yep. week of preparation for the race for this end players in the big org should always have the best prep as they simply can play more and that will end up showing in the results and what are they spending more time doing than absolutely anything else alts 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 much like time that's why i would never compete in a world first race like, I'm not saying I'm good enough and I could do it on my own if I wanted to, because I probably suck so much that I wouldn't even be able to do it if I tried. But I would never even try because of the amount of alts. I, like, I don't want to just do the same thing. Like, uh, like, I see them playing and it's just, it's so fucking boring, man. Like, you just have to play uh, 10 different characters. Like, I don't even want to compete on it at all. Yeah, do normal first? God, I can't. I'm Alliance. And like, here's the thing. Is the game hates alts right now? Well, the problem is like this is why I wish Blizzard would just do, just make a make a private server or something like that for people to do like race to world first stuff. Like I I think that would be cooler. Uh, I I just like the way that they have it now. It, there's like a lot of RNG involved. It's like is this better or not? Like I don't know. I guess it really just matters like what the players think, right? Because like what what like my opinion on this. Like really at the end of the day, who cares what my opinion is? Like I'm not competing. I'm not doing this. Like I guess fuck it. Who cares? I don't fucking care. Yeah. It's just it's just just my opinion. Being determined to know life for a month is probably a lot more important uh than being really good. Yeah, I mean like I'm also not a very consistent player and that's kind of why I said I probably wouldn't be able to do it, but just like overall um you'd be surprised. Like you think that oh, I play video games 16 hours a day. That's easy. No, it's not. No, it is not. Because you have to sit there like it's the same thing as like anybody who's had a desk job knows this it can be grueling to just sit there for 10 hours a day working at something without really a lot of breaks that you have to be constantly on for like on 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 you cannot make a mistake for 15 to 14 it's mentally it's exhausting man it's unhealthy it is exhausting it is brutal man absolutely fucking awful i've done this for 20 years not exhausted at all um yeah, I don't think you've done it for probably that long. I don't think that's true. Uh, that's what work looks like, Asmongol? No, it's not. No, it's not. You know I've had a job before. You can't pull this disconnected streamer thing to me. No, you know, like, eight, working eight... Do you think working eight hours is hard? It is in a lot of jobs. It is legitimately fucking hard. Like, it was hard working... Like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I got paid twice as much whenever I worked in the IRS and whenever I worked at Sam's. Working at Sam's was five times harder. Like, it is actually really physically demanding to work in, like, especially food service. It is brutal. But working eight hours in a lot of jobs is not fucking brutal. Double that. Every single day. Like, uh, we, I would do 12-hour days at, at, like, the IRS during the tax season, and it was generally okay. And that only happened for like maybe two or three weeks. And that was it. I was done after that. I imagine if it was even more. And also, I could make mistakes. Like, I, I made mistakes on tax forms 100%. Everybody did. It's just human error. And like, I'm not competing at a world first level in front of thousands of people. It's brutal, man. Yeah, it's absolutely fucking brutal.
If streaming isn't hard, uh, why is everyone doing it? I, I don't. I don't care about the. Oh, is streaming hard or not? Well, it's streaming. It's hard because you have to talk to the people. And I don't give a fuck. Okay. If you think that it's hard, then it's hard. If you think that it's not hard, then it's not hard. If you want to do it, then do it. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. I'm not going to argue it. Nobody's opinion is going to change. So that's all there is to it. If I'm saying doing anything for 16 hours a day nonstop is fucking hard. It is really fucking hard to do it for 16 hours a day nonstop. Anybody who doesn't think that, please watch my stream for 16 hours a day. If it's so easy. Please just do that. It's always been a part of world first raiding as well, but alts have become more and more important as Blizzard have increased the RNG from endgame grinds for the best gear. The yeah. removal of master loot in BFA compounded this problem enormously. Suddenly, you don't get to decide what class you want to gear up. The yep, RNG you're rolling the loot character. gods do it for you. This may have been in part Blizzard's attempt to stop guilds from split God, raiding, Rathian which I so also hot. get the impression they Holy aren't shit. the biggest fan of. Split raiding, just for a quick explanation, is forming a raid with some characters that are designated for main raids and then alts who are just there to help clear. The idea is to funnel as much gear as possible to the main raid characters so when the race yep. happens they are ready. Without yeah, Master Loot, how possible. does that work now? Well, they stack armor types instead as they are tradable for a period of time. Top guilds will have one raid with a leather class stack and then a second with mail and so on and so forth. This is where guilds have started to bring in viewers to help them and paying a lot yep. of gold for their drops as well. We're talking like they're paying? Like aren't they they paying like five mil for tier traders like i i saw something like that it was like five mil for trading tier sets 10 mil now holy fucking shit you get paid a million gold just to show up to the raid isn't that insane holy fucking shit man oh my god here's the thing there's somebody that wrote a paragraph about how lucky i am to be a streamer and like how it's different than his real job I'm, I read half of it and I stopped reading it. Like you just, like, nobody's gonna read that. Okay, let's go. Millions yeah, per items. That. This is so they don't have to maintain. There, two look at that, dude. Look at that. Trade a normal piece, two million. Have heroic tier to be eligible. Trade a priest slash DK Anduin ring, two million. Like, uh, got other items? Check our Discord. Why should you trade us? Every guarantee attendee is guaranteed curve boost after progress. Every attendee has entered into this giveaway. F two Mythic Jailer mounts. Two million gold jackpot. Two X, one million gold jackpot. Oh my god. Wow, look at this. Oh, what the fuck? What is this? This is a lottery ticket. Oh my god. Oh, I, I gotta join in there right now. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. Or three split alts in addition to their two, three, or four. There's another one, dude. Four million gold. Ten million gold for normal wards. Look, ten fucking million gold. If you trade them a piece of gear. Holy shit. But lost all. Oh, but but the, the thing in law arc, you can't get, make him item level, but it's like five more and you can buy. Oh my god, but lost all. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. Main rate. Call characters. it what it Tier is. Tier sets coming back in for Sepulchre in the Shadowlands has made this even more important, as many of the tier sets are just incredibly powerful and cannot realistically be left out. In fact, Raider.io has begun listing how much tier is being used in kills. Limits kill of Dao Sen had 18 players with four pieces and two players with two pieces. That is That's crazy. That they got all of that gear in two weeks? Isn't that nuts? Eight so like twenty so every single player had a, a two-piece set bonus, and 18 out of the 20 players had a four-piece set bonus. Can you guys believe they got that lucky? Did they just happen to have that many tier sets drop in their raid? Isn't that nuts? <laughs> Someone's saying, come to raid Pepeka card. Where's the card? I, I, oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's the card. Here, come, come here, come here, come here, come here. You, you, you want this? You want this? Whoop, oh, whoop, oh, oh, Give me the tier set. Give me the tier set. Come on, come on. Give daddy the tier set. Whoop, oh, oh, whoop. Oh, there it is. You know, that's what it is, man. I, I just, uh, I think that leaked. All right, guys, listen. It's not leaked. This is a fucking prop card that Current sent me whenever we did a sponsorship for them for Allcraft. It says Asmongold, and there's no names on it. This is a prop card. Like, here, you want me to read you the numbers on the back? There aren't any. It's blank. 
incredible going for how long the raid's been out. But it's not just in I'll raid, show you my however, real the top guilds are working the system to get an edge over the competition. More and more focus is being put outside of the raid too, getting fans or communities involved and offering incentives for your regular player to both yeah. have a chance to directly help their favourite guild, as well as potentially receive a regular player to both... Just for showing up. All you have to do is show up to this raid and you're getting paid a quarter of a mil. That's like what? Tw how much is a WoW token right now? Like that's like what? 25, 20, uh, 30 bucks, something like that. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Have a chance to directly you help go. their favorite guild as well as potentially no. receive a very good reward in turn. This is where two big players in the world first race come in. How much gold does your guild have? And how large is their social media presence? During yep. Nyaloth of the Waking City, Limit spent 257 million gold total on consumables and BOEs. Rem so, here's a question. Um, how much of that 257 million gold that they have was a product of RMT? Like, like how many? I would say, so, the, the 200, so... I think, so we have two categories, right? Um, okay, we've got category one, um, diligent farming, and category number two, buying it, it with, <laughs> with real money, okay? So, 257. So, I would say 7 million? And this would be 250. So, uh, yeah, about this is probably what about the ratio is here. Uh, yeah, they boost for gold as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. And that's why they borrowed more money to boost wild tokens. Well, the thing is, like, the guild also raises money. So, like, it, do you really think that the guild wouldn't just buy wild tokens if they had to? Like, if, if they felt like they couldn't borrow the money or get the money, would, would do you really think that, like, like one of these guilds wouldn't just buy WoW tokens? Of course they would do that. Yeah, they have debt, too. Yeah, I know that they have debt, but there's a there's a limit to debt. Well, there's supposed to be, but apparently, uh, I, I don't know. Remember, corruption's being kind of OP. The perfect Scrap item Echo spent would 30K be worth on Sylvanas. so much gold to them. That's a lot of money. Surprisingly, moving into Shadowlands, Castle Nathria set them back even more. A total of... 331 million gold was spent by Limit in that tier. Not a bad bit of change there. What about the next tier, the Sanctum of Domination? How much do you think it cost the guild that got the world first achievement? Have a think about it for a moment. It was Echo who spent a total of 478 million gold. That's nearly half. That's a lot of money. Think about how many long boys you could buy. That's a lot of that's a lot of fucking money, dude. That's crazy how much money that is. That isn't that insane. Calculate that into dollars? Sure. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. I like that. Okay, um so we have uh let's see. So this would be 4 uh 478 000, 000, 000 okay. Um, I would have to divide this. What's the current price of a WoW token right now? Uh, it, it's this, it's 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 eleven forty five or something like that that it gets fucked. Uh, let's say it's one hundred and seventy thousand. Okay, it's one hundred and seventy thousand uh, equals. So that's this many, and then we'll multiply this by twenty, right? So this is the amount of WoW tokens that they would need to buy. So uh, I, I want to make sure that we keep this in mind. Two hundred eighty k in EU. Uh, okay, and Echo is EU, right? Yeah, e Echo's EU, right? Okay, all right, let's make this accurate. Uh, so divided by, uh, 270,000. Uh, and that is, so they'd have to buy 1,770 WoW tokens, and then you multiply that by $20 for each WoW token. Actually, how much is a WoW token in, uh, in Europe? I just want to make sure this is it. It's 20 euros, uh, 20 euros. Let's just say it's, um... Let's just use 20. Let's make it easier. Okay, uh, multiply by 20. So they would have had to have spent, for the WoW token price of that amount of gold, $35,000. Or sorry, that's euros. So if you take euros, they're usually worth more than dollars. So that's probably closer to $40,000 US dollars. 40 fucking thousand.
That's all. That means it would almost be cheaper to play Lost Ark. Think about that. It would almost be as expensive as playing Lost Ark and getting to 1370. Uh, Isn't that nuts? That's a big fucking number, man. It, it's just that's a whole that's a whole lot. How do they profit uh, as a guild? How much do they profit as a guild? Well, um, I think that like now I don't really know how much guilds sell uh, sell like carries for real money anymore because like they're owned by like big uh, like orgs and shit. So like they probably don't sell carries as much for real money anymore. But I would say like any of the guilds, like if you are, I, I would be willing to indulge the idea that uh, Echo and uh, Unlimited or, or Liquid uh, that they do not do RMT anymore. But they used to. I, I would say 100% five years ago they used to. I'll bet anything on that. On top of that, I think that many of the other guilds in the top 20, uh, they do RMT. And, and, and that's, that's how they do it. They sell carries for real money. It, it, it's that simple. Sponsors? Yeah. But, like, nobody cares about you if you're fourth place. Ricky Bobby, you ain't first, you're last. That's all there is to it. If you're not winning, then you're losing. And who wants to pay a loser? Yeah, who wants to pay somebody for being a loser? Half a billion Shake and get bait. the world first race in the last All tier. And Sapoko, with its return of tier set, surely must see north of 500 million spent, but we will see once it's all over. So, in short, gold matters quite bitch. a bit, but you need to get the message out there. You need to take loans to run boosts or you carries for people bitch. to want to know what you are after, and this is why social media is so important. It spreads the message across the internet and gives top guilds the best chance to find players willing to help them out, all for an excellent reward. Taronda it is with so all the top hot. guilds now. I can't blame them whatsoever. Overlays on streams saying they're buying gear, Twitter posts, Discord messages. If if you can think of somewhere to make the message it is worth doing it because even getting those extra few items on raid members just gives you the little nudge that you need to push your boss or complete a mechanic by that extra well it's an advantage right and like if you're playing the thing is like you're if you go and you look at i think a really good example of this is like a uh, black hand is like black hand a lot of the wipes on the boss were at like three and one percent so like you're you're dealing with like you are on the razor's edge. So because of that, you're trying everything that you can to give yourself an advantage. Yeah, that's what it is. Few seconds. And big orgs can pay the players not only all year round through sponsorship deals as well, but guilds that are still just guilds and not under an org will just never have that same level of resources at all. You see this in other competitive things as well, such as Formula One or football, to name two. One team gets so much money. So somebody in the in a chat actually sorry, give me a second. Many resources. Uh, somebody in the chat actually said something. Yeah, isn't it like weren't you like not able to like advertise boosting? uh cross server like isn't that kind of the same thing yeah because like yeah how, how are they able to do that like in game no it's even the cross server like is it actually only in game they aren't boosting they're buying gear so they're paying they're paying other people to boost them oh that's true no you're right about that that actually is true you're right that they can fully exhaust every single option of improvement and usually they rise above the competition as a result well eventually in time Money certainly helps, both in-game and out. So is this whole system just pay to win then? Well, it's more like pay to compete at the highest level whilst giving yourself the best chance to have a positive outcome from both a- It's pay to enter. It's like a board Ape Yacht Club. You've got to have the picture of the stupid gorilla or you can't go to their special parties where they talk about how they're going to change the world with the picture. So yeah, that's what it is. So it's, it's like, obviously... That's what it's it's an entry, right? Yeah, it's 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 like getting 1370, right? That's all it is. It's pay to play. Yeah, it's pay to play. Exactly. Why would you do that though? Um so they could win and make money. Like think about how much money that they're making, right? I mean, like they're sitting there spamming ads uh like constantly. People are watching the streams. Like look, if you spam ads and you have a lot of viewers, you make a lot of money. And whenever I say a lot of money, trust me, I know. You make a lot of fucking money. Oh, why would they do that? For money. What is this like some kind of comp? Like, oh, I wonder why this ever happened. It's for money. 
Ban appeals? Do you ban appeals? No, I'll do it after this. Player and class perspective. At this point, I'm not sure how any non org based guild can genuinely put a challenge up for Echo or Liquid in just how far ahead they are. Let me get the stats up again. No, for you're the definitely right. Like, there's no way another guild can compete with them because they have the infrastructure. They have like so many other tools that are available to them. They have people that can take time off of their uh, of their work schedule. Uh, they have uh, m like millions and millions and millions of gold. Uh, they have like professional support through guilds uh, sorry through orgs like there's no way that they can lose R realistically there's no way they can lose gold spending and if we talk about the last few tiers echo and liquid were about five days ahead of the third place no, in castle well, they do. That, echo that and is liquid were nearly a full day ahead of the third place in the sanctum of domination though it was a close race overall and first and second were only one and a half hours apart there's a clear divide between the top two and the rest I suppose this has always kind of been the case. There's usually been one guild which is just very clearly better than everybody else in WoW. There is a finite number of players. Oh, I don't know about that. I feel like there's actually been a number of cases where things have been really down to the wire. Like, I, I feel like there are a lot of times where, like, there is... Like, back in, like, let's say Wrath, it was like Paragon was just, like, the definitively good guild. But, like, now it's actually good. Like, imagine if it was only one guild. Like, that would be boring. Like, I, I actually think it's way better if there's two guilds that are doing the race because it makes it exciting to see which one's going to win. Overall. So should anything change? Should Blizzard get involved to make it a more fair and equitable race? Well, they've always been quite hands off with the race the world first. Please, they please, Blizzard. I I'm going to be honest. Like, I know I said that they maybe they should make like a server or something like that. Please, Blizzard, just don't touch it. Please, if you touch it, it's just going to like, you, you know what's going to happen. Like, we all know what's going to happen it's going to get worse somehow like you're going to mess it up like just let them fucking play the game let them play the fucking game that's it just please like just don't don't just just uh, let it go let it go We've left it up to the players to compete and decide exactly how they want to do things we still don't have a global release in retail there is actually a global release in classic i think they would have changed to a global release in retail a long time ago if they were really taking this seriously they could template gear and cap items you get at a certain level for week one they used to have an attempt system back in wrath of the lich king where you they could did. only try a heroic raid 50 oh times. bro like that's not that was back in uh, in icc they did that and you know what the guilds did back in icc is they brought their alts in to learn to fight and then they went in with their main and they did the real attempts so that's actually that did not work they tried that before yeah oh, oh togc i forgot about that you're right togc had that too i totally forgot yeah okay give me a second i gotta take a piss oh shit mcconnell in chat what the fuck's he saying he talking shit he's talking is he talking shit again times per week total imagine how much split raiding that would bring into the game and, and they could Elden make ring. the emboss of the new raid actually worth killing for real as i'm doing this video no guilds have done jail heroic because the loot isn't worth it they brought back tier sets and didn't put the tier sets on the end boss guilds are progressing mythic content what they should have done with the end boss is they should have made the end boss drop a tier token the same as uh which fucking raid did that shit alakir i think it was alakir did this back in uh fucking tier 11 11, where if you killed Alakir, then he gave you a tier, basically an icon that you could redeem for any other ball, any other tier item. Was it Black Hand too? Oh, I don't fucking remember. Yeah, maybe it was Black Hand too. Alakir Island chickens. I did that one. I killed the chicken. I didn't get the special soul though. Without having done the last boss on heroic, how is yeah, this it a was thing? Blanking. Why don't you just put a token on the jailer you can exchange for any piece of tier? Man, Willie is such a smart guy. Let me tell you something. This guy has some really good insights into the game. He really does. The guy really knows what he's talking about. Let me tell you something. Yeah, he really does. The smart guy. But overall, it probably is the best that they do remain hands off. Leave it to the players to decide how best to game the system, because they will. Whatever Blizzard do, it will always be a back and forth with the top players. And again, they yep. can hardly make the game specifically for the top 0.1%. Well, they're and already the community doing it. has grown it into what it is, from the days of secrecy, refreshing armories and WoW progress, all the way to events being streamed live at the start of BFA, later with comms. It's grown a lot. He's... So that's 
lost for sure. Bitch. At the same time, it's lost a bit too. The hoops that players oh. have to jump through to truly remain competitive is just excessive. And selfishly, as a viewer, I just want to see the mythic progress, not split run number 16 of the week or all these convoluted systems they have to deal with. It feels like, despite the event having begun, it hasn't really started yet because the guilds don't have the ideal gearing they want from what is currently possible. I want no, to see the progression. It's, it, it's never going to be completely fair. That, that's always what it's going to be. Like, you're always going to have advantages and, you know, like things that you just can't really, you, you can't prevent whatever, right? It's just, that's just how it's going to be the mechanics getting closer to kills side by side and just a good race overall if that makes sense again as started with i understand they need to do what is needed but i just make the race to, uh... here's what i think they should do don't think about it don't design the game around it don't uh do anything to the game to uh indulge it don't uh do anything to the game to stop it treat it like it's not there just treat it like it's not there a and make the game for everybody else that plays it and then the, the the top players will figure out a way to get into it anyway. That's it. Just treat it like it's like it's not there. Some thoughts on the race. That's the best how it's that they changed. can do and why. Let me know your thoughts on it all, whether you agree or not, and how you find the race to world first as a classic player or otherwise. As always, yeah. thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you all on the next one very soon. Very soon. That's what I was going to say. It's a five minute fix. I think you can do the at least 60 things you can do now without affecting others. Do you really expect Blizzard to put in five minutes? Do you expect them to invest five minutes into something in the game? They could tweet three times uh, about how bad their player base is in that time. They could ruin at least one character story that's been developed for a decade in five minutes. Like, they, that's... How could they ever spend five minutes making the game better? How could they? How could this possibly happen? This is a video made by Willie. Willie's uh, he's actually a really good. Uh, uh, he started creating a classic WoW content, and I'm glad to see him diversifying. You know, doing some retail WoW content, talking about other games as well. Uh, I like his uh, his videos. They're pretty well put together. Uh, he's a nice guy to just listen to, and uh, that's about it. So make sure to uh, make sure to give him a subscribe, give him a follow. Recently hit a hundred thousand subscribers. I remember whenever he was right close to it, and uh, now I'll subscribe too. I guess on this channel.